or sail. To determine the width of a rune, we can plot how it's typically written on a grid like what some of you might have used for learning to write letters in primary school. To do that, we use its four main parts, the stem or stave, branches, whether long or short, bows and tails, which I tend to think of as just low branches anyway. Here we see feo is four units high and two wide. As the Anglo-Saxon rune row is a majuscule script, all of its runes are of equal height. Lagu is four units high and one unit wide. As a bare stave, Is has a width of zero units, but as you might expect, most runes have a width of two units. Although it could be argued runes with bows have only a width of one. Some runes could be controversial depending on what you think their typical form should look like, but the basic idea still applies. How wide do you think they should be? Now if we look at Eo, we see that it has a width of two units just as Peor does. Consequently, the late rune Queor must have a width of four units in order to stay consistent with the pattern. Even Stan has no need to be that wide. However, in order to avoid cramming its bows into an unusually narrow space, Air also needs to be four units wide. If the theory that it developed from a bind rune of E and Ark is correct, that would explain its unusual width. Of course, this is just conjecture. So, tell me, what do you think? Are later runes more likely to be wider? How well can this technique be applied to other rune rows? Do any of them contain any runes wider than either Quaoth or Air? Er?